Hey, I'm Chris Zeff from Make Everything, and today I'm going to show you how I designed and made a dustless hand sander to replace my manual hand sanding pad. Check it out. All right, so the reason for this project is, like a lot of people in their wood shop, I have a couple of these guys, which are essentially just a replacement hand sanding pad screwed to a block so that when I need to do little touch-up work, I can just kind of run over to a project and, and sand it. Um, I've got tons of different grit of five and six inch sanding paper, so it works really well to have just a quick and easy way to touch something up. The problem is if you're ever doing this with a kind of more volatile wood, like an exotic wood or something that kind of can put a lot of dust in the air, or you have to do a lot of it, there's really no way to collect the dust out of this, right? Most of the vacuums and sanders that I use in my shop, all of them actually, are pretty much dust free, which is great and it keeps me working safe. But when I'm hand sanding, that luxury goes away. So while I was looking at one of these pads, I thought, well, there's definitely a way for me to attach some sort of a vacuum to it. So I took that thought, went onto a pad and paper and started to design. So these are two kind of good examples of replacement sanding pads that you can buy. This one has four screws in it. I believe this is for a Makita or a DeWalt. Um, I bought this one at Home Depot, but you can get these on Amazon as well. And then this one is for a Festool. I think this is for a Rotex. Now, um, you can easily buy both of these on Amazon for a couple of bucks as well. And both of them have holes in them for dust collection. Now, obviously, if you just screw them to a block, you don't get any dust collection. You just get a hand sanding pad and these holes don't do anything. Um, similarly, this was the block that I used on this one. And this is a great way to utilize one of these sanding pads. And because the pads are Velcro, it's really quick and easy to pop them off and put them on. And if you don't have one of these in your shop, you should probably start by making one of these um, because they're really, really great. Now, the shape of these is very similar. And then in that, the design of a way to make it dustless was kind of the same for both of them. So if we take the general shape of one of these pads and think about how to make it dustless, right? I would want some sort of a vacuum port to come in here from the side. And then I need somewhere for the dust to make it up through the holes in the bottom and go into, I guess, some sort of a chamber. So my first thought on this was to try to use some sort of a plumbing fi fitting, something that would kind of like fit on top of this, like a four inch piece of hose with a side port, but it wouldn't really be ergonomic. It would be really difficult to hold and use. So then I kind of thought of this sort of kind of bubble shape. So if I were to come up on the sides like this and then go up into a, like a, a cylinder, I could have a dust port come in from the side and I'd be all right. Now, kind of moving through an iteration of this, I was able to come up with a design like this. So essentially what we've got here is a central stem that would hold a screw. The sanding pad will exist there, and then you've got this whole chamber that would all be contoured and allow airflow to come in through the bottom and then go out to my dust extractor. All that dust would be able to get sucked up through the holes in this one, or even in something like this, and it would all go out the side. Now, to manufacture something like this in a shop traditionally would be really difficult because I could try to turn this out of wood on the lathe, but it would be really hard with all those different directions to turn this and have it be strong. And plus it would just be a really difficult turning. You'd have undercuts, you'd have to glue in some sort of a port on the side. And while I think it would be possible to do out of wood, it wouldn't be ideal. So my next thought was to design this on the computer and see if I could 3D print it. So moving into Fusion 360, I decided to start with some circles and cylinders and use the contour and bevel tool in order to basically design this thing and have it look really organic and smooth. Um, Fusion made it really easy to do that by allowing you to contour lines. And I'm not great with Fusion, but I was able to draw what I think is a pretty complicated model pretty easily. Now, the first one I did was the six inch and now moving on to the five inch, I did essentially the same thing, but I had to design essentially a platform in order to screw the sanding pad to. And then I can move these over through Cura and onto the 3D printer. Now for the 3D print, I'm using PLA 
filament on a Mingda Magician X 3D printer. This printer has been amazing out of the box. I've been using it for a couple of weeks and it was able to handle this 13 hour print really easily with really good quality and no real issues. All right, so after all that computer work and a lot of time 3D printing prototypes, I wound up with a couple of different shapes. Now the first one I designed was like this and it sort of had this bell top, but it really wasn't ideal to kind of get your fingers around. Um, and also I made the dust port too small. The size of the dust port that I'm going for is to fit my Festool, which is, I believe is a 35 millimeter. Um, it's about 1.4 inches that's gonna go in there. So I wound up with this design with this sort of hook for your finger and you could see it when I was designing it on the computer. Here's one of them right off the 3D printer. Now the way that I'm 3D printing this is with a very minimal support because I don't want to have to pull a bunch of supports out of the inside of this shell. So these supports are just what's left after 3D printing it and you can see they pretty easily just snap off and then you can go in with a knife and you can clean up the inside of this. So for the larger of the two, for the six inch, which is using this Festool replacement pad, I designed it with this, this kind of stud in the middle with a spot for a hex nut. And you can see everything in here is really well contoured. So the airflow is gonna be great. And then this just basically sits on there and then I can glue in a nut and screw this in. For the smaller five inch pad, because it has four holes, I designed it with this little kind of standoff. And you can see if you look inside it, that there is airflow that can get around this whole thing. Everything's really well contoured. And then there's a spot for four screws to screw into this and it'll hold this really well. And they both have that same port on the back and a little bit of purchase for your fingers to get in. So this was one of the ones that I printed and it actually broke. But what I can do with this is I can show you a little bit of what the inside of the 3D print looks like, which is kind of helpful to understand why 3D printing a part like this is really just the most ideal option. So you can see in here, there is tons of contours. Everything is blended. Everything is super, super smooth. And I could have done a little bit thicker on my infill, which would have helped with the strength. But you can see a part like this would have been really, really difficult to make any other way than 3D printing it basically out of thin air. Let's assemble these two so I can show you how they work. All right, so assembling these is super easy. Uh, I'm gonna start with the five inch one because that's probably the one that most people have sanding paper for, and if you're gonna make one of these, you'd likely make it for the five inch one. Again, I'll put a link to where you can get one of these in the description. Now, you could just glue this to that pad, and you know, after using this only a, a little bit, um, that might be kind of what you gotta wind up doing. Um, it would make replacing this pad harder, but it would give you a better and more stable sanding surface. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put some screws right into this, and because the infill isn't so thick, on these, they might not last. Now a way around that would be to make the infill on this 100%. Since the walls are thin, it's probably not even gonna take that much longer. And then you'd have a really solid place to drill in some screws, which would make this last that much longer. But for now, I'm just gonna throw some one inch screws right through the holes in here, right into my 3D print. Maybe just for some extra grab, I'm gonna put a couple of dabs of super glue that I could break off if I really had to. So that's it for the five inch pad. Um, literally just four drywall screws and then I can go ahead and put a sanding pad on there. And this thing is good to go. We could hook a vacuum up to it and try it out. But before we do that, let's set up the six inch pad. Now for the six inch pad, I did leave space for a nut, but it's not really gonna work because the space is too large. So I'm gonna use a T-nut and I'm going to glue it in there with some epoxy. And that's gonna just give me a spot to put a Allen key bolt like this which is just gonna kind of give a better grab uh, because there is only one point of mounting for the six inch pads that I have. 
So to glue this in, I just need a little bit of five minute epoxy. So a little bit of five minute epoxy and I can just let that sit. And while I do, I'm gonna set up a test for the five inch pad and then we'll test the six inch pad. So typically when I'm sanding, I use this. This is a Mirka Deros, it's a six inch sander and I hook it up to my dust extractor. When I pull the trigger, it's automatically turns on the dust extractor and this is essentially a dust free sanding setup. The dust extractor that I have is a HEPA filter so I don't even have to really worry about wearing a respirator when I'm using this. Now, like I said, the purpose of this little mod, this is also a $600 sander, is to be able to be dust free when you're doing the occasional kind of like touch up sanding that inevitably happens on a project. If you just want to kind of get in, take care of some corners, or if you need to do anything off site and you have a smaller vacuum. So you can see this is all set up. I'll throw a piece of sandpaper on it and then I'll hook it up to the vacuum and you can see the way that it collects dust while you're sanding. So you can see how effective the vacuum works through this. I mean, I'm even able to kind of just like dab this on the table and pull up sawdust. So from a safety perspective, and even just from a cleanliness perspective, you could use this to sand drywall. Uh, you could use this to sand cabinets in a finished house, and you wouldn't have to worry about getting dust everywhere. So now that the six inch one has had some time to dry, I'll just show you that one too, and then kind of give you a summary. All right, so now that this epoxy has had a little bit of time to dry, I can throw this Allen key screw in there. Now this one, there's a little bit more flex to just because there's only one mounting point in the middle. So there might be kind of a need to add some washers or some spacers, but either way, I think it'll accomplish the goal. Now it's the same thing, hook the vacuum up into the back. Throw a piece of sandpaper on there, and we can see how the airflow works on this one. So you can see, just like the five inch, the six inch one gets really, really good airflow through that design. Um, the, all the different contours inside, there's nothing really to restrict airflow. There's nothing really to restrict the flow of the particles through them. So overall, I'm super happy with how these came out. I think that this is something that I'm gonna use in my shop a lot. And I think a lot of people could use these especially if you're doing work on site, especially if you have to do that last bit of touch up and you don't wanna get sawdust all over you know, your client's house or your own house for that matter. All right, that about does it for this video. Um, I'm really happy with how these things came out. Uh, there was a lot of kind of iterations of the design. I messed around with it a bunch, had to do a ton of measuring and figuring out. But at this point, I think that they're pretty close to perfect. Obviously, there are always gonna be ways to improve on a design like this, but I'm gonna make these files available on my website if you wanna try to 3D print one of these for yourself. And I'll also leave a link down below to where you can get these exact sanding pads that I used in case you wanna use these because they will work best with the designs that I'm gonna publish. Um, for the 3D printer I used, I used the Mingda Magician X. They sent me that printer and I've been using it for a couple of weeks now. 
I gotta say, I've had a couple of 3D printers. That one has worked better than any other one that I've ever had. Out of the box, took two minutes to assemble. It auto levels, it has a filament sensor, which you can see on this one, I've got a little bit of gray on top. That's because the printer actually knows when it runs out of filament so that you can put new filament in and continue a print even when you run out. So that was unintentional, but it actually looks kind of cool. So I left this one that way. Uh, either way, if you're looking for a super reliable 3D printer, check out the link down below to check out the Magician X. Like I said, I've had really good luck with it. Um, and that's what's important to me when I'm doing this kind of work. Uh, I can't waste time messing around with fidgety, sort of finicky 3D printers that don't work or that need to be modified and all these different things. I just want something that's going to work out of the box that when I generate a design on the computer, I can just turn around, put it in the printer, and it pops out with no errors and no issues. So that's what I've been able to accomplish with that printer. I made a bunch of these things. I spent days printing different designs. Um, and you can see each one of these took more than 10 hours. So I've already put close to 100 hours of printing time on that printer. Uh, and so far I haven't had a single issue. So that means a lot to me. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out the link in the description on where to get the files for these. Um, and if you have any comments, leave them down below. Let me know how you would improve on this design or what you would do differently. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. It helps me a lot. And subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this, more videos in the shop, making things, modifying things, restoring things doing all sorts of great stuff. If you want to see what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis, check me out right here at Make Everything Shop. You can kind of see what's going on behind the scenes and see what else I'm up to. And uh, that's about it. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoy this little mod. I hope you get some use out of these things and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks.